Good to see you again, sir. There's another letter waiting on your desk at your leisure. Andra, dead. I... I can't believe it. Leandra, dead. I... I can't believe it. I'm giving it all up. I made a vow to the Chantry, and it was wrong to turn my back. Sebastian, listen to yourself. You're as impulsive now as the day you turned away from us. Do you think the Maker wants another rashly spoken vow that you'll abandon when the next passion takes you? I will not. This is your life, child. Don't spend it being blown about like a weather vane. But here's Hawk. Maybe you can talk some sense into him. I don't think sense is really my strong suit. How long has she spent telling me to return to the Chantry? And now that I want to, she won't take me. It was wrong for me to break my oath to the Chantry. I've turned against the Maker. And for what? Why would I want to rule Starkhaven and deal with jackals like Lady Harriman for the rest of my life? Do you see yourself as a prince or a priest? That's exactly the question I've been praying for guidance about. When I think of going to Starkhaven, calling on allies like Flora Harriman and all the corrupt, scheming nobles, my throat swells shut in horror. When I think about staying, I'm at peace. If you give it up, what then? I suppose I must convince Elthina my commitment is sincere. Then I will remain here, 
to represent the Maker's interests as she thinks best. When you're a prince, those same jackals will kneel at your feet and pay you taxes. I do not have hubris enough to imagine it matters to the common people who rules them. Someone will take the reins. The fields will be planted, the crops gathered. No one will notice that a veil lives and isn't there. And I can devote my life to the Maker's will on Thedas. You're wise to stay here. No one trusts a man who breaks his oath. I cannot return to Starkhaven and subject my people to war without a clear sign that it's the Maker's will. I think this is yours. My grandfather's bow, but where did you get it? One of the Flint Company men did some looting. I figured I'd return the favor. Thank you. It's hard to mourn the loss of a thing while my family lies dead. But I did think of it. What's the story behind that bow? As the youngest son, it was my place to lead Starkhaven's militia. But I never had a talent for swordplay. Too much getting hit. My grandfather said the bow is the wise man's weapon. You can defend your city without opening its gates. Grandfather said the day I could pull the string on his bow, it would be mine. Then why didn't you have it with you? I was 13 when my grandfather made me that promise. I would rise at dawn to practice my shots until I could hit the isolate of a helmet from the top of the ramparts. But my parents pledged me to the Chantry before I could show him. Were you and your grandfather close? He was a man of the world, Prince of Starkhaven. But he had the most unshakable faith in the Maker. When my parents threatened to pledge me to the Chantry, he told me he'd gladly trade his title for a life of contemplation. The Maker ordained a place for each of us, I remember him saying. We have only to serve. You can't shoot your family at a charging bandit and stop him dead between the eyes. Do you hold nothing sacred, Hawk? Still, I'll stop dwelling on what can't be fixed and appreciate this gift you found for me. I look forward to testing it. I can't go on like this.
Don't let them get away. You Coterie, one of Lily's friends. Lily was one of ours. She was working for you, and now she's dead. You get one chance. Did you kill her? Lily didn't die by my hand. Someone else did this. Explain yourself. This is a case of the right hand not knowing what the left is doing. One of the scum that attacked my caravans worked for someone in the coterie named Brecker. Lily said she'd look into it. I think Brecker had her killed. Brecker? Hmm. If you're lying, I'll find you. Men, we have to get to the bottom of this. Now. Turn up your purses, Kurtwall. The leases of Javaris Tintop are up for grabs. Told you I know all about our friend Javaris. Smuggler's cup outside town. You must be Brecker. And you're that lice-covered refugee. You'd better leave the bone pit shipments alone. Understand? You're making demands of me. You own half a stake and a mine and you think you're somebody, huh? Some Ferelden's don't have the courtesy of knowing when to bloody die.
know I might be able to give you a hand with that. I love doing that. I found the thieves responsible for the cargo thefts. I put them out of business. Excellent. With that resolved, the mine's profits will soar. For now, partner, please be sure to visit our workers occasionally. You have a knack for keeping them happy. You know the Tethrus family businesses are registered in your cousin Elman's name? You don't say. But I can't find any record of you having a cousin Elmond. I'll introduce you sometime. He's a little on the shy side. Varric, he's imaginary. Which makes him a much better head of the household than I am. He never misses the Merchants Guild meetings for one. Good. Carry on.
You are looking well, Sarah. It's different here as captain. Feels like family. Hawk. I don't care what else is going on. We haven't spoken about Leandra. How are you? My mother is dead. My heart's broken. I suppose I could say, at least you knew yours. But that seems more about me than you. I just have flashes of impossibly long hair. But my father... Would you like to hear one thing? You've never talked about him. My father trained me in all the skills he had been forced to give up. He spent everything to get me into Kaelin's service. Do you know what I remember? When he read to me, stupid things, dragons and heroes. He wouldn't turn a page until I reached over and took his hand. That big man made every step of the story my choice. I loved that. He died of the wasting in a Denerim ward. Those last weeks, I read to him. I had to take his hand to turn the pages, and I couldn't tell if he was too weak, or if it was the old game. He smiled at that, at his big girl. <sighs> I don't know why I'm telling you this. Drink? A glass for those we've lost. <sighs> All right, then. Benoit Dulac and Leandra Hawke. Don't let anyone tell you when to move on. Take their hand and say, my choice. That's all I have. I'll miss her too. I do hope the Viscount remembers to eat soon today. It is apparently not enough that the Kunari define my political life. They must also infect what I hold personal. It is my son, Seamus. The life you saved he would now squander by converting to the Kun. He has left for the Kunari compound. Please, Sarah Hawk. Convince Seamus to come home. The Arashok says nothing good about Kirkwall, yet he accepts conversions? I cannot understand him. Maker knows I've tried, but he landed with, what, a few hundred men? Add up the deaths and defections, and the Arishok must need to bolster his ranks. I'm sure my son is quite the symbolic prize. Did anyone else see him leaving for the compound? He made no secret of it. I'm sure he intended it as another of his statements about closer relations. Your example inspired him. I might agree, but now is not the time. These matters are... delicate. He's politically dangerous, you mean? The office must remain strong, Sir Hawk. He is of age. The decision seems rightly his. I want... ...to let him find his way, but in my position, he's taken a great deal of inspiration from you. I want to allow his idealism, but not blindly. At best, my opponents will claim that my office is now in Canari hands. At worst, I lose my son. He's your child. How fast can he be? Who knows? He might actually listen to you. No one else has dealt as closely with the Kunari. I hope you will see that we can be accepting and still be a proud citizen of Kirkwall. I wish we could all see that. Good day, Sir Arthur. Okay. 
So was that anti-Canari, anti-Viscount, or Seamus himself not wanting to be rescued? Seamus isn't the type. Let's go. Arashok wasn't planning on keeping the Viscount's son. Sarah Hawk. I'm here about the Viscount's son. Are you? In four years, I have made no threat, and fanatics have lined up to hate us simply because we exist. But despite lies and fear, Ba's still beg me to let them come to the Kuhn. They hunger for purpose. The son has made a choice. You will not deny him that. Converting the Viscount's son? His opposition will have a field day. And? The enemy of your enemy should be your friend? I don't fear the whole of them together. And it is not my role to reject the free choice of Vidathari. The son responded to his own demand of the Kuhn. He is neither my slave nor my prisoner. He is not even here. He went to his father. Ask the Viscount why he would send you and the letter both. That probably could have been mentioned earlier. They are meeting at the Chantry. A last pointless appeal, I assume. The Viscount would involve the Chantry? No, but we know who would. Mother Patrice. A suspect in many things. If she has threatened someone under my command again, there is only one response. I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation. I just can't think of it right now. Her intent is obvious, and what the Kuhn demands is clear. This is the last insult I intend to suffer. Resolve this, or her hiding place will be reduced to rubble. I will be watching, Hawk. Sarah Hawk, look at what you have done. To pounce upon the Viscount's son, a repentant convert in the Chantry itself. A crime with no excuse. Your Kunari masters will finally answer.
All this will do is make people hate you. I have kept the fear of the Kunari fresh in every sermon, every prayer. They will know whose word to believe. When people learn of this attack, they will rise. Not zealots or the unknowing, but the true majority. Great plan. Until people start dying in a war with the Kunari. To die untested would be the real crime. People need the opportunity to defend faith, starting with you. Earn your reward in this life and next. These heretics must die! Do you see, Your Grace? Traitors attacking the very core of the Chantry. They defile with every step. There is death in every corner, young mother. It is as you predicted. All too well. She's on to you, Patrice. Quick, lie harder. Don't you spout your Kunari filth! This is a hand of the Divine! I have ears, Mother Patrice. The Maker would have me use them. Viscount Dumas' son is dead. Killed here in your name. I'm sure my name won't like that. Patrice? Seamus Dumas was a Canari convert. He came here to repent and was murdered. Love or hate the Canari. A blind nun could see she took this too far. No price is too much when we speak of eternity. Eternity is long enough that we need not rush to meet it. They deny the Maker. And you diminish him, even as you claim his side. Andraste did not volunteer for the flame. Sir Ahawk, you stand with the Captain of the Guard? The young mother has erred in her judgment. A court will decide her fate. The Chantry respects the law, and so must she. Grand Cleric? Grand Cleric? We protect those of the Kune. We do not abandon our own. Please, send for Viscount Dumas. My son. Murdered in the heart of the Chantry by those who held a sacred trust. What hope for this city when we fail our own so completely? The Arashok is still here, Excellency. You must be ready to stand up to him. I cannot. I have already failed where it mattered most.
please. Hawk! Leave me! This won't exactly ease tensions. The Viscount's Son and Canari aggression, even if justified, it won't end. Hawk, I thought this could wait, but I need to speak to you at your home very soon.